What's going on guys? So obviously a few weeks ago we finally got the layer rise on the new GT500 and if you follow all the hype you would think that everything was going good in the Ford camp but personally me I'm concerned. It seems like Ford may be circling the drain and here's why. And if you happen to follow the stock market you'll notice that Ford has been trending down for a while now and maybe that's what triggered this next move. So of course midway through last year Ford announced that they would stop production of all the passenger cars except for the Mustang. Now obviously this left a lot of people scratching their heads and for obvious reasons. It's not hard to go out on a regular basis and see a ton of focuses and fusions on the road. So what will cause this? Now part of their reasoning is the sale of crossovers and SUVs has been back on the rise. And of course the low gas prices haven't hurt the resurgence of that segment. Like, so it begs the question, is Ford the front runner or are they just running out of ideas? So a few days ago I was on Instagram and I came across this render for a four door Mustang. Now to me this thing just looks like a fusion with the horse on the front. Now even though I'm sure this has nothing to do officially with Ford, I'm not that confident that this is not far off from what they would do. The creativity within Ford has just not been up to par recently. Let's take a look at some of their recent cars. I'm going to start with the Navigator. Now I should start off by saying I am a fan of the Navigator. I like the way it looks, especially with some options. I feel like this thing is what Lincoln should have been trying to sell for the last decade instead of those plasticky dinosaurs that we got instead. Like, but even still, it might be a little too late. But as I look more closely at the Navigator, there's one thing that bothers me, and it's from the side profile. Now at first glance, everything looks good. It's not as boxy as the old one, and it's definitely a lot sleeker and modern looking. But the thing that I can't get over is, it looks eerily similar to the Ford Flex. Can you see it? Like now obviously these two cars are made by the same company, so you would expect there to be some of the same styling cues. So next, let's take a step back and look at the Lincoln Continental. Now when this car was first announced to be coming back, there was a lot of hype surrounding the car. Everyone thought that the big American luxury car with the suicide doors would be back to take on the likes of BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, and its Detroit rival Cadillac. Like, but as we move closer to production and we got more specs, we learned that there will be no long wheelbase version and no V8 engine option. And the best that you can hope for is a sub 400 horsepower V6. Now if you look at this thing, there's nothing about it that's really special or stands out. Now I don't think it's a bad looking car by any means. But the only thing special about it is the price tag. Now I feel a car that's going to be sold for $60-70,000 should be a little more impressive than this. Just compare it to the Mercedes E-Class or the BMW 5 Series. And this thing just gets lost in the pack. Now even the new CT6 from Cadillac looks way better. You get more power with its competitors and pricing wise they're all similar. So what was Ford thinking by giving us this? And one more thing. This isn't a Lincoln Continental. This is a Lincoln MKZ. This is the Lincoln Continental. Competitors aside, the Lincoln Continental looks almost exactly like his little brother. Especially from the front angle. Now considering this thing costs thousands more, what's the upside? Now Ford is like that kid who wants to copy your homework and promises he'll change it up enough so that the teacher won't notice. But later you and him are in the class getting lectured by the teacher on integrity and importance of doing your own thing. The only difference here is Ford is doing it to itself. Now this is why I say they might be running out of ideas. Now I think part of the reason for this is that Ford has forgotten that cars are more than just numbers. Horsepower, fuel economy, towing numbers and safety ratings are all great. But the most important thing is the connection the car has to the person. It's the reason why that the Escort, Focus, and the Mustang have such strong followings. It isn't because they could always build a competition out of the water. Like, it was the connection that people made with those cars. Alright, so that's it guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Am I way off base? Do you agree with me? Like, drop a comment down below so we can know what you think. Remember to like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.